I ran my first marathon in April 2012. I was 42 years old. Hello, welcome to Paris. That's my number, 35739, and I'm green, which means I'm slow. Until then, I'd been a casual runner. Of course, I ran at school and occasionally went jogging on the seafront near my home, but I'd not entered a race or done any serious training until 2010, when I entered my first 10K race. How'd you feel? <laughs> That's the fastest time I've done it in. Congratulations. Is that the last time you're ever running? Yes. <laughs> A half marathon followed and before I knew it, I was on the slippery slope. Over the next eight years, I started to do trail marathons. I joined a running club. Then I started to do long distance ultra races. My marathon time gradually improved from around 3.30 average to 3.15. And eventually in 2016, I ran the London Marathon in 3.09. Training to achieve a sub three marathon takes years. Okay, there are some people who are gifted or genetically primed and can run under three hours with minimal training or preparation. But for the rest of us, it starts when you first start running. Once you step out of the door to run your first mile, that's when you start training for a sub three marathon. Initially, it's about building a strong aerobic base and conditioning your body. New runners will often suffer niggle after niggle as their bodies adapt to regular running. It can take many years of consistent running to get to a stage where you rarely get injured, where you can get up in the morning and run 10 miles without breaking a sweat and run a half marathon without drinking any water. Once you've got that base fitness, the next step is volume, gradually increasing the number of miles you run each week. And again, this can take years I was running about 40 miles a week for quite a few years before I upped my game and started running a consistent 62 miles or 100 kilometers a week. And if you want to break three hours for a marathon, that's the kind of mileage you need to be looking at. In the six months prior to my sub three marathon, I ran at least 100 kilometers a week and had some weeks at 130 kilometers, some weeks of 140 kilometers and one week of 150 kilometers. I adopted an 80-20 strategy whereby 80% of your sessions are at a very slow pace. This enabled me to achieve large volumes but without getting over fatigued or injured. But I also included 20% of hard efforts, either on the treadmill or outdoors. I did high intensity interval sessions or short, sharp 5k time trials, where I'd make sure my heart rate reached zones 4 and zone 5 if I could, at least some of the time. I tried to stay clear of that comfortable zone 3 void. It's unavoidable that you spend some time in that zone, but I'd never plan a session to be a zone 3 session. No one is going to hand you a sub three marathon on a plate. You need to work for it. In all likelihood, you should be running an 1835K. Absolutely shattered. 1833. Or a 38-minute 10K. Or a one-hour 25 half marathon. That's a PB by two minutes. To be within the ballpark of being able to achieve a sub three marathon. In terms of a taper, uh, two weeks before the marathon, I reduced my mileage uh, from 130 kilometers down to 100 kilometers. And then in the week of the marathon, uh, I think I did about 30 kilometers before the marathon. So that whole week, including the marathon, was about 70 odd kilometers of running. In the weeks prior to the marathon, I ate a normal diet. I do tend to be flexitarian, so hardly any red meat, but perhaps some chicken occasionally. I do find it hard to resist the cookies and milk though. What? Seven days before the marathon, I did a three day carb depletion. So I ate very minimal carbohydrates for 72 hours and then went back on the carbs with a slightly higher ratio of carbs to fats and proteins. I wouldn't call it carb loading. I don't really do carb loading. It's just a slightly altered uh, ratio of macronutrients, so slightly more carbs than proteins and fats. And certainly in normal circumstances, I would just eat a balanced diet. 
eat bread and desserts and just get all fat and sassy. Race day breakfast was a tin of rice pudding and a couple of cups of coffee. Rice pudding sits easily on my stomach. It's a great source of slow release complex carbohydrates. During the race itself, I ate one half of a banana at 20 miles and drank one small bottle of Purdy's fizzy fruit drink. But it, it could quite easily have been a can of Coke or Red Bull. Basically, a bit of slow release complex carbohydrates in the banana and a hit of high GI simple sugar from the fizzy drink. That's it. It was a cold day and I didn't lose very much fluid as sweat, so I didn't drink anything else for the duration of the run. So just to be clear on this, I didn't drink or eat anything during the marathon for 20 miles. You may have heard the term fat adapted. If you're looking to run long distances, you might want to look into running some of your training runs on empty. You don't need to take lots of food with you, don't take any food with you, especially if it's not a long run. You know, anything around 10 to 20 kilometers you, may, you don't need any food at all. I often just go out with just a cup of coffee inside me. No breakfast. And what I think is that that teaches your body to burn fat more efficiently, which means you need to use fewer gels or sugary drinks in order to give yourself energy to run. That may not work for you, but a lot of the gastric problems in ultra running, in long distance running, are caused by too much sugar intake, overload of coke or gels. Hi guys. And I think if you can cut down on that, then all the better. It was cold when I did my sub three marathon attempt, so on a warmer day, you probably will need to drink more water because you'll lose more fluid through your sweat. However, on a cold day, I honestly didn't need to drink anything at all. Because it was so cold at the start of the race, I did wear a light montane fleece over my race singlet. I did three laps in that, which is about 10 kilometers and then I threw it to the side of the road. I kept a thin, light pair of gloves on and a cap for the whole race. I wear compression shorts, not for any medical or physiological reason per se, but simply I find them more comfortable than regular shorts. Uh, my compression shorts are from a Spanish company called Hanker. I also wore Kalenji seamless running underwear to help prevent chafing, uh, but I didn't have any anti-chafe cream on. On my feet, I wore Injinji toe socks. These are the same ones I tend to wear for my 24 hour, 100 mile adventures. Very comfortable and no blisters. I also wore the Next% Percent Nike Vaporflies. These are carbon plated shoes. They're legal and they help you go faster, so why not wear them? I only wear them for races and never in training. My current watch is a Garmin Phoenix 6X Sapphire. Uh, it's what I use for most of my training and races. It's quite big and bulky and it's probably overkill for a flat road marathon. When it comes to pacing, I am a huge fan of even splits and negative splits. So I would try to run most of my kilometers at exactly the same pace and then speed up at the end if I had anything left. On the main screen, I had average pace in kilometers per hour and lap pace in minutes per kilometer. I'm a regular treadmill runner, so I'm quite used to seeing my speed displayed in kilometers per hour. For a sub three marathon, you need to run 14.1 kilometers per hour or four minutes 16 per kilometer or 650 per mile. Ideally, a little faster than that to account for any extra distance you might accrue by not sticking to the exact racing line. Obviously, in a race, you may well be weaving around people. But that is adding distance. So crossing the line at 42.2 kilometers is highly unlikely. It's much more likely to be a little bit more than that. Lap pace was difficult to keep constant because it was quite windy on one side of the track, but calm on the other side. So some kilometers were slow into the wind, whilst others were fast with the wind behind me or, or still. 
Prior to the race, I'd looked at various online race predictors and they all told me that I was right on the cusp of a sub three marathon. Some said just over three hours, some said just under three hours, but all of them with a margin of error. And unlike many of my other marathons, and I've now done 120 of them, it was not a case of fingers crossed and hope I have a good day. This was a matter of running as I knew I could, running as I knew I should, and executing a plan that I was perfectly capable of doing. I had run an 18.35k in a race just a few weeks before. I'd also done a test half marathon where I ran really comfortably at one and a half hours for a half marathon, keeping my heart rate low, so I knew I could get at least there. All I had to do was concentrate, focus and carry out the plan. Right, it's PB day here at Goodwood. We are going for a sub three marathon. I'm nervous, it's freezing cold. Uh, it's been a stressful morning, but hopefully we're gonna get it done. I crossed the line in two hours, 58 minutes, 57 seconds. On my watch, the distance was 42.4 kilometers, so an extra 200 meters run. I did have to sprint the last little bit just to make sure I got in under three hours. Come on, Richard! Right, Richard, how was that for you? Cold, hard, and I think I probably matched my PB, so I'm pretty happy. 303. Um, it was just disgusting into that wind, wasn't it? Yeah, really dread that little bend. Well, it's quite a big bend. So the loop is about, what, 4K long loop, something like that? Yeah and two, two and a half kilometers of it is into a wind. Even if it's like a, a mild day, which today is, it's, you're into a wind because it's quite exposed. So you're kind of dreading that two and a half K every lap and it's like 11 laps. Still, 3.03 for Richard and my first ever sub three, 2.58, 59-ish, something like that. And now he can retire. I can now retire. I never have to run another marathon ever again. <laughs> no. <laughs> so that's it from the Goodwood Marathon. We are off home. It's very, very cold here. You don't realise how cold it is till you stop running. Um, but we've had a, a fantastic day. First time ever under three hours for a marathon. So happy with that. And uh, we're off home to enjoy the rest of our Sunday. Apologies, there hasn't been loads of film. Um, it wasn't a filming day today. It was a running quick day today. Uh, so there we are. Right, take care guys. See you for the next one. Bye bye. And that's it. That's how I achieved my sub three marathon. After eight years of running marathons, I'm finally there. And now I think I'd be disappointed if I didn't get close to a sub three road marathon every time.